Hello, hello. I believe I am live. If there's anybody there watching, if you could let me know. I'm just going to double check because we had a problem last time with the sound. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. I've had quite a day. I'm ready for a drink. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's see. Hi there. So you can, can you hear me okay? Can you let me know if you can hear me okay? Thank you for tuning in, Christina. Okay, so today we're celebrating Cinco de Mayo a little early, and I'll explain why um, in a little bit. But um, for tonight, we are drinking tequila. It's right there. Uh, this is really good tequila. Great. Thank you for confirming, Christina. Um, we actually put out a recipe, a spicy margarita recipe uh, from Soho House on our Instagram stories. So if you're interested in that, you should go check that out. Um, I did not have time today to make my own spicy margarita. So we're just drinking it straight up on ice. I did uh, actually cut a lime and I put a little bit of salt in so I could pretend that it was as close to a margarita as I could get ad hoc. Um, it's about to thunderstorm here in about 15 minutes, so hopefully the technology um, will hold. Um, but if it doesn't, we'll just wing it. Uh, so, uh, today is the last Friday of the month. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you is that starting in May, we're going to switch these to Wednesday at 8 o'clock um, in the middle of the week. It's a fun way to end the week, but uh, we thought maybe we could... Um, maybe uh, get a larger audience by talking on Wednesdays at eight after people are home and after they finish their meal. Um, I'm all for midweek drinking too, I'm not against it. So I wanted to mention that first. And then um, the other thing I wanna tell you is that coming up this Sunday at 5.30, we're gonna reveal our next flavors and fun. And it's going to have a great quiz. We've been working on it uh, this morning. Um, so you can test your knowledge about the country. We're going to announce it at the beginning. And then we're going to have all sorts of questions. I don't know the answers to most of them. And I know a lot. So, um, But you can then participate and put in the comments what you think the answers are. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And our next one is going to be on May 16th on, uh, at 4 o'clock. And we have a really, really, really great program. And we're very excited about it. Um, we actually know where we're going in June as well, um, but we're not going to announce that just yet. Uh, so, but we're excited about that. And so here's another sign. So you want to tune in at 530 on May 2nd. It's going to be in the same place here on the uh, Premier Wellness Travel Facebook page. And uh, we hope you tune in to see where we're going. Okay, so there's that. Uh, then I wanted to tell you that the reason we're celebrating Cinco de Mayo next, which is technically next Wednesday, the 5th. Yeah. Um, is that Wednesday, the 5th is also travel advisor day and it's actually a whole week of celebrating travel. So I have decided to celebrate that by going live every weeknight at eight o'clock. So the Sips and Spotlights will actually return on May 12th. Uh, on that Wednesday, but next week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm going to be here. I'm going to answer any questions that you have, but we also have themes for each each night. So let me share with you what those themes are. The first uh, evening, we're going to be talking about travel after grief, loss, and languishing, and why travel restores. I don't know if you saw the article in the New York Times about languishing. It was a very interesting a piece that talked to, gave us a word for uh, a lot of the feelings and uh, that we've been dealing with over the course of the um, pandemic. And um, so sort of focusing on that and the fact that there's been a lot of grief of all sorts, um, not just loss of loved ones. I lost my dad at the beginning of all this, but a lot of, for a lot of us, loss of identity, um, loss of connections with other humans, loss of jobs, loss of income, loss of dreams and hopes. I know somebody who had to postpone a wedding um, from this year to next. So there's just been a lot of loss and grief in the last year. 
and how travel is going to be going forward. Um, there's a lot of talk about revenge travel and where you just want to run around and spend a lot of money and do everything that you couldn't do for the last like, you know, 14 months. Um, but there's another type of travel where you just go someplace and you just don't have to think. Um, maybe just sit on a beach and drink a margarita. So we're going to talk about that first because I thought that was a really important place to start. Then on Tuesday night, we're going to then talk about COVID in general and how it's changed travel, how it's going to feel different and how it's going to work differently. And I've got a lot to say about this. There's, that's, this is going to be the longest one, um, but there's some specific points I want to share with you of what it means and what it's going to feel like and how travel will now be new and sort of what I call not the new normal, but the next normal. It's just going to be another evolution of travel and it's never going to be the same. And we're going to talk about that. And answer any questions that you might have about that. I'm sure a lot of people do have questions. Then next, on the actual day of Travel Advisor Day, I'm going to talk about why we still exist and what we do. Um, dispelling some of the myths about travel advisors and, um, and you know, what people don't really understand what we do. One of the big myths I want, I want to dispel is that I have friends who say, oh, I don't want to bug you. No such thing as bugging me. This is my jam. I love talking about travel. I love helping people about travel. So it's a myth for you to think that you're bugging me if you're asking me for help with any aspects of travel. So that's just going to be my number one um, myth that I'm going to debunk. But tune in for more. I think I have nine. I'm still working on that one, so I'm still outlining that. Then on Thursday, we're going to talk about the perks and privileges, privileges and perks, of, of working with me and how not to leave money on the table. Um, mostly this is me going to be sharing about what virtuoso is, what that means, how um, me being a virtuoso advisor gives you extra value. Um, I don't care how affluent you are, you, nobody likes to waste money and nobody likes to leave money on the table. So we're going to talk about all the ways that I help you and all the uh, perks that I can provide to you uh, by working with working with me. And sometimes if you know where you want to go and it's a virtual hotel, I'll, I'll get you in there for free and VIP you. So you book, I VIP. It's, it's, it's silly not to use me. And then on Friday, I'm going to share some really exciting kind of stories about um, experiences that you can't plan even if you wanted to, even if you knew to. And how I how it's how it is that I am able to give you um, access to experiences that again you can't do you can't you can't Google even if you wanted to. So um, there's a funny saying in the travel industry: when you go with the internet, you go with God. <laughs> and I actually also saw um, Amy Klobuchar on the news this week. She's got a book out on monopolies, and she was talking about as an example of monopolies. One of the ones she was talking about actually was um, internet um, travel companies are eating each other up. So if you think customer service was bad before, you just wait. It's not gonna, it's not gonna get any better. We travel advisors are both more human and more humane than our computer counterparts. So uh, we'll talk more about that next week. Um, okay, so I think the theme for tonight was Mexican spa vacations. And I wanted to share with you um, a bunch of really, really special places in Mexico. Now, Mexico is technically open to Americans and it has been, but it's also one of the ones I, that's been added to the do not travel list of the State Department. Now, some of that may change. Again, I, I think I spoke about this last week. The State Department and the CDC were not exactly on the same page they were telling the CDC was telling Americans if you're vaccinated you can go and then a week or two later the State Department said well we're adapting the CDC guidelines and we don't think Americans should travel to these countries so that's sort of affected insurance in the travel industry it's a little bit still of a, a lot of confusion about that again I do have access if you know where you're going I do have access to a special database that's uh, available to people within the industry where if you can tell me, you know, where you're from, where your passport's issued from, and that often does matter, and you want to know what it's like to go someplace, I can tell you uh, what the regulations are to get in, what it's like on the ground, and also um, what you need to get back. And you do still, even if you're vaccinated, Americans still need a negative COVID test within three days of returning to the United States. So I am going to be talking about Mexico. You do need that test to come back. 
um, you uh, can go, but the, the, they are on the do not travel list. So maybe this is still just something to dream about and not quite go yet. Um, but these are really, really special resorts. Uh, two of them are Belmond, which you know is very special to my heart. I'm a member of the Belmond Bellini Club, which means I can get you even more special things be above and beyond being a virtuoso advisor. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Um, I just thought it was a good thing to talk about with uh, Cinco de Mayo coming up. Um, okay, so the first place I want to talk about is in Cancun. This place is called Nizuk Resort and Spa. Now, my sister actually has gone there. I have actually had lunch with uh, the salesperson from here. This is before COVID. We actually got together and um, I heard all about the property and it sounds absolutely fantastic. They have ancient Mayan rituals. They have a beautiful, beautiful spot. This is a picture here of um, just part of the resort. And interestingly, they use gemstones and algae and cacao powder in some of their treatments there. And um, it's in a part of Cancun that's away from the sort of um, college kind of places, college towns. It's kind of like down at the south. It's closer to the airport and it's quieter. And they actually also do yoga on paddles, which I didn't talk about in my blog post, but they do that as well. So that's number one. Number two is in the Riviera Maya. Uh, this is the Belmont property there. We're going to be talking about two Belmont properties. This is the first. And at this one, they use um, Melipona bees in one of their treatments. They have antimicrobial um properties that they use in a range of treatments. They obviously have yoga there. Um, it's a beautiful property. It's one that actually where you have can have a lot of privacy and they have um, villas and, and rooms with independent doors. Um, and they, obviously they have tennis and um, beach, beach sports um, activities for the beach and water sports. And um, yeah, the beach there's supposed to be gorgeous, um, really golden, and this is a pavilion where they have uh, yoga lessons. So again, that's a Belmont property. Um, I'm a member of the Bellini Club, so that means I have additional amenities and bonuses and extras to give you as well. Then also in the Riviera Maya um, is a really beautiful resort uh, called Chablis Maroma. There's two Chab Chablis that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, their design is exquisite. They're like, in my mind, like an, an Amman. Very soothing, very zen, um, very beautiful. This actually was listed as one of the top five spas in the world by Travel and Leisure in 2020. So, I mean, to me, that says enough, right? Uh, they have a shaman there, actually, and the shaman will give you a blessing for... Um, the four cardinal points to bless you with peace, love, well-being, and abundance. Who doesn't want those things? Uh, they also have um, sound vibration, healing, and uh, a lot of really other interesting things. They also are very big on sustainability there, so that's also cool. By the way, I have a blog post up about each about about all of the same list, and you can then click through and go to the website if you want. Um, uh, seven spiritual spa vacations, I think is the name of the blog post. I'll put it in the comments so you guys can go and check this out. Okay. Next one on the list is in Takati. And this is the oldest one in Mexico. I think it's 80 years old and it's called Rancho La Pierta. Um, they, their spot is on 4,000 acres, um, with cacti and really ancient oaks. It sounds beautiful, right? Um, near the mountains and really a lot of diverse wildlife. You can have aquatic lessons as well there. They do cardio drumming. I don't know what that is, but that sounds interesting. Obviously, um, a lot of typical spa fare like uh, hot stone massages and such, but they also have something called biodynamic cranial sacral, cranio sacral therapy. Yeah. So after you do hours and hours of high energy activities, then you can just go and relax and get some pampering at the spa. This is, I think, just a beautiful image with the wisteria there. That's why I picked it to share with you. Okay, then we have another Chablis um, uh, uh, resort to show you. This is in um, the Yucatan. 
This is wholly integrated with its surroundings. And so there's a lot of indoor outdoor space at this place. Also very, very beautifully designed, very Zen, um, really gorgeous. They, the, they said that the hotel rooms um, actually seem to like be floating in the trees uh, um, that you just feel like you're floating, you know, in, in the branches. Haven't been there yet. I actually got invited to go last November, but I was, I'm cautious. I, I was going to travel until I had my, my COVID test. So I was not able to take advantage of that invitation, but I do hope to get there soon. They do have cooking classes here. They also have beekeeping um, and also are very, very focused on sustainability and also have my, a lot of Mayan rituals. Um, they have a, I think a shaman there as well. Um, yeah, so this is really, really beautiful. Okay, the next one is a little bit more of a traditional um, resort. It's a little bigger. Um, this is called La, uh, Le Blanc Spa Resort. It's in Los Cabos. Um, but they have special rooms where they can have all the alcohol taken out and all fresh juices put in. You can try out that, I can't remember the name of the contraption, but they you can have, have put in your room that that meditation headband where you can read what your brain waves are doing while you're meditating. I can't remember. It's a specific tool and it costs a lot of money, but if you go there, you can try it out, um, in the room. Um, there's, uh, this is an all inclusive resort. So a lot of the spa services are really included in your fee. I guess, I think you get points basically that you can then use for anything around and on the resort. Um, they have a hydrotherapy room that's, um, with got special lighting and, and is backlit. And it's a little bigger than some of the other ones, but also still very restorative. So I did want to mention that in, in my rundown. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is another Belmont. Um, this is in a beautiful town that I've never been to, but I have very good friends that honeymooned there in San Miguel de Alande. And they said it's just absolutely stunning. They also have a cooking school here at this Belmont. It's called Belmont Casa Sierra Nevada. Um, it might be under renovation, actually, as of this month. I need to double check that. I remember hearing that they were going to be renovating one of them. I think it was this one with the cooking school. Um, and basically, this was like six establishments that were like, I guess, ain't old homes, uh, aristocratic homes that they kind of melded and brought together. Um, so this is another place where you can go and have a lot of privacy. They have um, something called a tomato. Tamazacal, which is, is a traditional Mexican steam bath. I'm sure I butchered that. And there's just emerald waters that you can um, snorkel through. And then they have something called sea notes, which are freshwater sinkholes that are carved by underground rivers that were believed to be gateways to the underworld by the Mayans. So that sounds pretty cool too. They have a, a very, um, very good spot. And their cooking school is called the Saison Cooking School where you can learn how to prepare traditional Mexican dishes and healthy versions of them as well. So it's really a tops for wellness. And again, Belmond, I'm part of the Bellini Club. You can get there and go there for free. So that is the list of um, the seven spiritual spa vacations that you can try out in Mexico um, as soon as you feel comfortable. Um, they all of them really do bring in elements of the Mayans and the Aztecs and all the traditions of, of those cultures um, in a I think a very meaningful way. I most I was mostly surprised impressed with what Chablis was doing with that respect. So it's very very exciting. Oh, Elisa, you've been there to the C notes. That's awesome. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to elaborate on that for us as well. Um, so is there, do you guys have any questions about travel? There was big news this week that, uh, the cruise ships are going to be allowed to go in July, as long as there's a certain percentage of people vaccinated. That was big issue of contention. There was a big a feeling that the cruise ships were being treated differently than regular hotels, um, that were maybe just as big, but because they were on the sea and I guess because they got early flack for being a Petri dish that they were still under you know, not allowed to even function. So apparently that's been lifted and will be uh, able to sail uh, starting in July. Mm. God, that tequila tastes good. Um, so that's good news. Um, also, I should let you know that um, in conjunction with the big week next week, that I have a brand new website. Uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, it looks, it looked good before. It looks even better now. 
So I encourage you to go and check it out. We're going to continue to add improvements. We have a really cool events page, which you can find just in the drop down menu under services. Um, and you can see everything that's going on coming up. I was in the process of adding some other options um, and things going on in May because May was empty, but we did have things going. What's the question? What if people don't want so you can you can travel, um, but you're advised not to. So nobody's gonna nobody's gonna stop you at the border saying you can't go. Um, certain countries will not let you in, so it sort of depends also on where you're going. For example, Israel is not taking your word for it that you've been vaccinated or even looking at a piece of paper. They actually require you to open your arm and give blood, open your veins and give blood, and they're gonna verify that you've been vaccinated. So it depends on where you're going, to be, to be, uh, to be honest. I, I don't think in Europe they're going to let people in who are not vaccinated. They're talking about also instituting a, a vaccine passport. Um, the passport situation is really going to be confusing, and I think it's going to take a while to shake down. The, and whatever the airlines really um, adopt will probably become the standard. Um, there's something called Common Path, Pass and another one called Health Pass. And I think Common Pass is being used by three airlines, Virgin Atlantic, um, Lufthansa, and one other. And then Common Pass is in a testing stage and is going to be used, I think, by 20 different airlines. So um, you may be able to technically go, but you may not be able to arrive, is what I would say, depending on where you want to go. Um, right now, the United States actually just um, disallowed anybody coming into the United States from India because of their high, uh, higher rates. I did not get a chance to read the full um, notice about that. I don't know if they added Brazil, which is also having a lot of problems. But um, so it sort of depends is what I would say. You can certainly um, email me or drop me a comment or message me on Facebook, um, and I'd be happy to look up whatever country you're interested in or where you're interested in going and seeing what this special database says and that I have access to about the, the travel requirements about um, where we go. The other interesting thing is that once you get there, there are different rules. Um, there may be places that you want to go, but maybe don't want to go while there, there are these rules going on. So for example, I think in Greece right now, there's a curfew of 5 p.m. Um, in, in Italy, it's 10, except in Sicily, it's 11, maybe because it's farther south and has more sunshine. Uh, Morocco has a curfew of nine, so you have to be out of any restaurant by 8 p.m. So the staff have time to get home. Um, things may be changing. I'm, I, I think in Morocco, they said they're going to reevaluate and things may change in May. May 10th is the day that they're thinking that things may change. A lot of museums are not open. Or if they are open, you can only go by appointment and you can't get an appointment. Um, I'm even telling people who are trying to plan for next spring, um, if they're like, for example, they want to go to Italy and they want to go see Pompeii, you need an appointment and you need, probably need to set that up like months and months in advance. So that's, that's going to be part of the new reality that I'm going to be talking about next week. I do not have any idea when Europe is opening up. There have been mixed signals. So Greece basically said, well, we're doing it anyway. Um, we're going to just open up because, because their economy is so reliant on tourism. So I think they're kind of pushing the envelope. I've heard mixed things about Italy. I was, uh, talking to somebody in Venice who's a tour guide in Venice, uh, a week ago. He was very pessimistic that it was going to happen as was announced in July, in early June. But then I saw something from another person that I know who's in Milan who said that he, you know, he believes that it's going to happen in early June. So um, still to be determined. I think it'll depend very much so on how much the, e how quickly the EU gets the passport up and running. And also the passport for, for Europe, each country is going to be able to decide its own, its own entry criteria. So you may have be able to get into Europe in one country and absolutely need to be vaccinated. And another one, you may just need to have a negative test and a negative PCR test. So it's still going to be a patchwork. I mean, the United States is even more messed up because we have 50 states and five territories, right? And so the only two um, states right now that are even uh, working with a digital uh, version of verification is New York State. They were the first one. And then Hawaii is going to be by, I think, May 10th, May 10th or May 15th, going to be launching an app that only will recognize Hawaiian vaccines and, and that's to be able to allow Hawaiians to go from 
island to island because right now they're they're not allowing people to move from island to island. So they're hoping that if that works, that then they can more easily roll that out for other Americans. Americans are traveling to Hawaii, but there's all sorts of crazy rules, and you have to fill out this form online and get you know be tested and quarantine. There's just like a lot of logistics with that. It can be done. It just is very complicated to do right now. And so the goal is that the to have um, a vaccine passport will standardize things, and that's why I'm hopeful that in the absence of uh, a global global solution, or even in this country, there's not even going to be a national solution. It's going to be state by state. But that what the airlines are doing and the private sector with the airlines will step into that breach and standardize things. And that, to the extent that things are clear and things are standard, it'll make the it'll make things easier. It'll make things easier for leisure travel and for business travel and for the economy to get back up and running. I saw a very interesting interview yesterday with the chairman of the of United Airlines. Um, he was interviewed on the, on the Washington Post website by David Ignatius, who's their foreign um, columnist. And he was asking all sorts of interesting questions about whether or not business travel would ever come back that the way that it was. Um, and that, you know, people have learned how to work remote. They don't need to be there in person. They can still be at home and do their Zooms. There's not going to be the need to travel in person for business purposes. And United is of the opinion that that's not the case, that human contact is important still, even in business. That's how ideas are, are germinated and, and passed around. So he, they're betting, United, that business travel is going to come back. Two other interesting things that came up in that conversation is the they're going to do more United going forward, um, holding you know with connecting flights when they're um, delayed when your incoming is delayed and then you miss your outgoing. There's going to be more flexibility. They're actually going to be more willing to hold planes so that when there are um, delayed passengers coming in from somewhere else, you know into a hub, they will be more amenable to holding planes. Apparently, that's new. David Ignatius told a story about how frustrated he was. He was like basically banging on the gate door, but it was shut. And even though the plane was sitting there and still sitting there for 30 minutes because of air traffic control, he couldn't get his butt on the plane. So they're going to be more flexibility about that. And then he also talked about whether or not change fees are coming back. You know, I remember when they first instituted them, they were only 25 bucks. Now they're up to $200. And apparently United is not going to bring those back. They understand that... Um, it, that they was not customer friendly, that the people, their employees who were had to institute it um, were not happy about having to institute it. So apparently the change fees are not going to come back right away, if at all, ever, according to the chairman of United. So hi, Victoria. I hope everything's good in the Amalfi Coast. Nice to see you here. So um, anybody else have any other questions for me? I hope you tune in next week. Um, I really have a great program planned. You can sh definitely shoot me questions ahead of time, either on Facebook. You can just shoot me anything you want that you want me to talk about on, on Instagram in the stories. There's always a, there's going to be up every day and ask me anything and I'll address that. Then in the talk um, that I do at, at 8 o'clock, again, Eastern time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, celebrating travel. I'm very excited about it. And I hope you tune in on Sunday as well to see where we're going next with our flavors and fun. Does anybody want to guess where we're going? It's a different continent. So far, we've been to Italy and Ireland. I'm going to see if anybody wants to guess. Hello, hello. It's so nice to see so many people tuning in. I hope you're drinking some tequila, too. Oh, no, Monica, you're not allowed to guess. Monica, Chef Monica, who's watching today with us, she's my co-host. The Flavors and Fun was actually her idea, and I'm very thrilled that she came up with this idea. Those of you who don't know what Flavors and Fun is, we have some new viewers today. Basically, during this time of travel slowly opening up, uh, Monica and I, Monica had the idea of putting together a special virtual night where we would celebrate the food of a country and then we would go on an adventure. So the flavors is the food. And she's a personal chef. She's a very prominent personal chef here in D.C. She's actually twice been on the cover of Personal Chef magazine. She um, She's really a wonderful person. I've known her for over a decade. I don't even know how I've known her. She used to cater all my parties um, when I, back, back when we had parties. Um, 
And then I do the fun part of the adventure. Not that the cooking part isn't fun, but then we go on a tour. So Victoria, who is here, helped us uh, get a, a sense of the Amalfi Coast while we cooked a lemon pasta with Monica. So we did that first. It takes about 45 minutes. And it's not just a demonstration by Monica. We actually cook it with her. So you have to get the ingredients ahead of time. She gives you a list of the equipment that you need so you're not like scrambling for your lemon zest. Or she'll, she, I learned a new way to zest lemons too as well. So it's all really fun. And um, for Ireland, we cooked a really delicious green soup. I had some friends over on Monday to have the leftovers. It was del absolutely delicious. And an Irish soda bread, isn't that what it was? A soda bread. I didn't get a chance to make the bread. Um, and then we had a wonderful, wonderful tour of the Neolithic sites around Ireland, which you may not know even exist in Ireland. You know, everybody thinks of um, Ireland and thinks of, uh, you know, the more recent history, the, the war for independence and the civil war that they've had um, about the potato famine. Um, they think about Irish music, folk music, obviously, the great movie once that was turned into a musical. Um, but we focused on Neolithic sites. So we learned about what was going on in Ireland during the Bronze Age and the Iron Age and got to see all these amazing, amazing sites. And we had a great tour guide for that. So and we're very, very excited about our next destination um, on the 16th of May. So tune in on Sunday at 530, not 5, 530 in the same place. And you can participate in a really fun quiz and, and find out where we're going to next. Okay, we're going to sign off, I think, unless there's any other last questions. I'll just wait a couple of seconds. I think there's a little bit of a delay when they pop up here. I'm so glad everybody, a lot, couple of people showed up. We got This is the biggest audience yet. So I hope you tune in on, on Wednesday the 12th. Um, we're going to start having guests. It's not going to just be me talking. We're going to plan these things out ahead of time. We're going to start having guests. And I'm going to be broadcasting from a very special location at the end of May. I'm not going to reveal that just yet either. I'm going to wait until after we get through next week um, and then let you know. But I'm actually going abroad at the end of May for a couple of weeks. I'm going to see an ex-boyfriend too, which I'm very excited about. Okay. Have a good evening, everybody. Have a great weekend. And I will see you here on Sunday at 530 and Monday night at 8 and for the rest of the week. Ciao for now.